loud. This is the Scooter McGee Show on News Talk 1310 KFKA. The following program is intended for mature audiences. Kids, sit back, get comfy cozy. It's time for Shallow Moments with Scooter McGee. Good evening, Gotham. Metropolis, Emerald City, Xanadu, Babylon, to the ISS and the rest of you. We got a lot to cover tonight in a Take Out the Trash News weekend. Well, if Paul Manafort's going to jail for the rest of his life, maybe there's hope for Hillary. The IG report pointing out uh, the Clinton campaign regarding, um, well, sexual crimes against children. Great. <clears throat> From the CRP 4x4 studios, I am Scooter McGee. Stand by for another Quantum News Network. Friday, take out the Trash News Weekend. Joshua Card will be checking in with us from Seoul, South Korea. We've got some other headlines. All of them, of course, up now at 1310kfk.com on social media. <sighs> uh, Stormy Daniels uh, behaving like, uh, you know, no, not a story. Sorry. Get your ovaries back up on that stage or out you go. Oh, you can't miss you till you're gone. I haven't seen this much alleged shredding going on since Enron. Sorry, just having to point out the obvious. Feds recovering 731 pages of encrypted messages, uh, shredded documents, over 700 pages now. I see. Okay, keep going. That story is now so clouded, those waters are so murky that Americans simply don't give them. And you wonder why you have the government you have. Special counsel taking quite a bit of heat after the IG report. If actually the media reported the IG report correctly, it'd be game over. But we can't even get Colorado media to actually report, you know, the important issue of Governor Hickenlooper attending Bilderberg. Uh, in the political process of Calexit going nowhere, three Californias would give Democrats more seats. Jeez, oh, popsicles. Really? Whatever. Um, uh, well, longtime listeners know uh, Irish Mafia is what it is. And they're, the day will come. Where a lot of the stories that I have said on this station and in my years in broadcasting elsewhere, probably after I'm dead. But the time is going to come when those these FBI photos all come out. Um, John Travolta is not John Gotti. The closest actor in theory. Armand Asante, but that, no, no, no. You know who really, as an actor, personifies Gotti? Only the actor's a choir boy from the R gang, Robert Blake. Um, <laughs> the screaming from hell, audience walks out as the movie trashes. Uh, he, oh my God, don't, what are you doing? Do you know how many people from the Gotti crime family are still alive? I'm Gambino, I'm sorry. It's the Bergen Hunt uh, gang, actually. You really want to know the lineage of Gotti? I went to the memorial. I still have the prayer card. Hence my photo up on an FBI wall somewhere. And someday those photos are going to come out. And you're going to go, gee, he was not, he was not lying. Nope. Um, yeah, nice try, guys. 
Why are you suddenly now trying to revamp certain portions of history? The Hitler now of South Africa telling white people he won't kill him yet. Hey, at least, at least that's being honest, isn't it? Julius Malaya, a.k.a. the Hitler of South Africa, busy telling white people in his country that he's not going to wage genocide against them yet. I, I guess we're supposed to keep an eye on this story. Interview with TRT World News published this week. He says, quote, We have not called for the killing of white people, at least not for now. I can't guarantee the future. On my planet... If that were ever considered. That would be our military option unless we had to go to John and get a sit down then. Game over player one. You've just heard shallow moments with Scooter McGee. Thank God that's over with. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. All right, we got a lot to cover tonight, Gotham. Joining us on the phone early... Joshua Card is with us from South Korea. In the wake of now a week and of getting through the stories of what's actually happened in the Korea summit and what's fact, what's fiction, and what's the pulse of the world. Welcome to the show, Josh. Hey, thanks for having me on, Scooter. No. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, actually, several people this week, is your buddy from Korea? I'm like, I, I hope so. I you know, we don't know if he's been clipped by the authority. I mean, yes, in a perfect world, we'd love to check in with you every Friday night now because South Korea, North Korea, national, international attention, and the and the magnoscope is on it, the magnifying glass. But there's so much conflict and there is so much contradiction in the headlines and the stories. That's why I like talking to you because you're boots on the ground. If anyone's going to have a better take on the pulse, it's certainly going to be you than a pundit who is stuck in a cube in D.C. Mm. Well, you know, Scooter, as I said last last um, last time I was on, you know, most of my day is spent working with, uh, I'd say, first grade kids to lower middle school. Right, with you the said majority, yeah, elementary middle majority, school kids. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, they're kids, you know, what do they know? And I, I, I do remember you asking me, you know, how do they feel about Kim Jong-un? And, you know, I didn't really have a direct answer, um, but, you know, and I, I, but I did re- reflect on this during the week and he often ends up as a, but as a, butt in, in many jokes um, conjured up by the kids. So it's, I guess we can, uh, to answer your question now, they don't really think too much of him. You know, they they really see him as a just a, as a porky guy that just kind of runs his mouth. Um, and the reason uh, I informed you that you know it was okay, I called in early. I I've, I've been up for about three hours gathering some info. Granted, I there's no way I can get this you know on the show. You know, I, I've been taking notes, and there's a lot going on here. Um, a lot of interesting articles, and you know, I think there's some things that. Um, should give people, well, those who are supporting this, a moment of pause and, and reflect a bit more and, you know, a big fancy word coming at you, ruminate on this whole Singapore summit um, rather than the, the brouhaha, we're all, we're all friends and world peace is on our doorstep. Um, and so I really don't know where to begin. But I will, I'll go out and, and, and throw this at you. Um, and then, and, we, in, and of course, I've got some articles here um, from the Korea Herald and the Korea Times that are quite interesting. Um, I, I don't, as I said, I don't really know about what is being reported in, you know, the Greeley Tribune or, or I'm sorry, I, I know, I don't know the Greeley Tribune. I think I've met the Greeley Pravda. Um, <laughs> I tell you what, Josh, collect your thoughts. Guys, let's go early tonight on the break since we went two minutes late last night. No, 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 it's all right. Here, live from the CRP 4x4 studios pushing 16 after the hour. Let's just take a very quick commercial break. We'll come back with Joshua Card.
Celebrating their 20th year locally, the Bridge at Greeley is the perfect place for you or your loved ones looking to transition to an assisted living lifestyle. The Bridge at Greeley offers a friendly, family-oriented community with a loving staff devoted to each resident's well-being. The Bridge at Greeley has a wide range of helpful services and amenities while always encouraging residents to live as independently as possible. Have questions? Just call 339-0022. The Bridge at Greeley is the Goldilocks of assisted living. Not too big, not too small, just right. Jackie Chicken, move! It's okay, Drummy. These magic buffalo wings from Wing Shack Wings will fly us to safety. I didn't know buffaloes had wings. Don't bog yourself down with minor details, Drummy. Hop on. We have to get out of here before that giant pizza flattens the whole city. Will our heroes make it back to safety? Tune in to the adventures of Jackie Chicken and sidekick Drumstick. For now, visit any regional Wing Shack location for great wings anytime. Go to WingShackWings.com for menu locations, specials, and more. Love wings, love Wing Shack. So you think the Pawn Stars are in Vegas, huh? Have you been to City National Pawn? 3301 West 10th Street in Greeley, and you're the Pawn Star. With great deals on commercial and industrial tools, electronics, smartphones, laptops, and fine jewelry, so many great deals and a constantly changing inventory guarantee you get the best deal in town at City National Pawn. Need quick cash fast? City National Pawn has got you covered there too. Monday through Friday and Saturdays, remember, you're the Pawn Star at City National Pawn, 3301 West 10th Street in Greeley. What may be junk to you just might be another man's treasure. From stamps, sports memorabilia, silverware, or old jewelry, what may be junk to you just might be another man's treasures. Located at 2002 Ninth Street in Greeley, another man's treasures can take these old items and convert them into cold, hard cash. Located at 2002 Ninth Street, remember another man's treasure. Matt Rivette started in real estate just in time for the bottom to fall out of the market. And it turns out it was a good time to start. From day one, Matt Rivette had to do it right. Serve the client. Turn for sale into sold. 32 years later, we know market conditions will change. But Matt Rivette's commitment to you won't. This is a good time to get to know Matt Rivette at Pro Realty. List your commercial income or residential property with Matt Rivette. Call Matt Rivette at 970-356-1234 or go to ProRealtyHomes.com. Cutting edge commentary from the edge of reality. The Scooter McGee Show is back on News Talk 1310 KFKA. Welcome back, Gotham. Good evening, Metropolis, Emerald City, Xanadu, Babylon, and the ISS, and the rest of you. It is a Friday night. We'll get to all the Take Out the Trash News weekend. I promise headlines. They're already up and available for you on social media, available at 1310kfk.com. Just joining us or missed previous shows, Scooter McGee YouTube, done. Next. Speaking with web guys this weekend as we get ready to kick off the Greeley Stampede. I've got Greeley Stampede tickets later tonight. Where are they? They're right here. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, yes. and Oh, best of Greeley. Please do not vote for me. <laughs> Take those votes and get best dry cleaners this uh, year. Well, this, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you where I used to go <laughs> because he owned that, but now he owns uh, the, the Wash House laundromat. So I want you all voting best of for that. That link up on my social media, 1310kfk.com. We'll get to open lines uh, on the Greeley West Side Liquor Hotline, 877-353-1310. I'll do Greeley Stampede tickets here after on this day in Illuminati history. And uh, it's going to be a very easy trivia. You have oh, got a whole buttload. Thank you, Brady. And our Stampede tickets are brought to us by Gould. We'll get back to Josh and I got live reads. Gould Parts Downtown Eaton. Celebrating five years sponsoring Preps Radio. So they gave us a whole bunch of tickets to give you guys. And we'll have open lines at 877-353-1310. So, yes, Joshua Carr joining us uh, here quick. Josh, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Perfect. All right. So let me let me frame for you. Uh, okay, hold on a second. KFK, please hold. Um, so here's why I think it's important we get your perspective. Yes, you are you you're a day walker. You're 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 amongst the people. Not necessarily that you're talking to them about this, but I know you keep an open ear. Plus, I also know that you stream 
I'm sorry, skim the various global, international, and local headlines. I also know your, your roots here in Colorado. So your perspective, I think, is very important. So please don't minimize that. And if nothing else, you've given us a whole new plethora of resources in the Asian theater of digital information that we otherwise would have not gotten here. Fair enough. So Fair enough. I appreciate that. your perspective of this headline from I here, reflect, I think it's valuable. Sometimes when I reflect back on what I've said on the show, I think, wow, I am quite the charlatan. So today I, I just wanted to take some time and make sure I had some good information because I've caught myself eating my own words, you know, um that w- that was a great now that's a great example we had that discussion about child. you know what i'm gonna have to think about that and go look and we came back and you're like yeah the more i thought about this scooter yep nope uh, uh, yep no that's not right but <laughs> and and that you know what uh, how many times do you hear that on radio or television <laughs> right. oh, i screwed up right. sorry next but or yeah from a, or from a politician well you're never gonna hear that but yeah so uh, so again we've had the summit there's been Interesting fallout here in the United States. Photographs of Trump saluting a North Korean military official. That's getting play. Um, But again, we all know the perspective here. We don't know it. And if it it aligns with or it's dichotomically or diametrically opposed or if it's somewhere in the middle. Okay. Well, I know exactly. First off, I don't know what the other side, meaning home, that's what I mean. Um, the U.S. and the Western media outlets, are are they making a big deal about that salute that President Trump gave the general? I mean, I, is it really a big deal? Because I saw an article, well, I saw that mentioned here in what it's either the Times or the Herald, courtesy of Korea, and they just said it, it's a common courtesy, which I can, yeah, I, I, I can believe. You know, when U.S. and Germany in World War II, a surrendering or negotiating officers would salute each other. Now, whether, you know, if, if it's protocol for a, a commander in chief of the United States to do that, I don't know. But no one made a big deal about it here. Um, but at the same time, I think that's small potatoes right now. Oh, agreed. I, I they really... are fighting on the minutia and wanting to bring it to the foreground. That's why, again, and and I, I just get huge goosebumps. And I was speaking with Dan Dan, our Patriot man, here on Monday night. I kind of went off on the air on this, but or maybe it was Tuesday, but the situation of I can't wait here in the States for the media to figure out how they can poo-poo once the last of the remains from the Korean conflict are home or resolved because there are cases of the remains in North Korea where they're never, or again, I'm sorry, on the Korean Peninsula, in this case North Korea, we're not getting those remains back. There's a road on them. Or that village is long bombed and gone and been built and been destroyed by typhoon 15 times over. We know that that's where the body was. We're going to recognize it with a plaque. But that's my point. It is, to me, the gesture alone of, you know what, our petty differences aside, take home your remains. Closure. To o- right. Close one chap- do- close one door of a horrific period of time. In hopes that right. new steps can be made to pave the way for a future of brightness. You know, and, and on that note, for anyone that has Netflix back home, um, you know, I would encourage you to you know, set aside the, the mental midget, a Netflix original show or, you know, whatever is going on. And there's a great documentary I, I watched the other night called The, the Chosen, you know, the, the, the Frozen Chosen where the Marines fought. It's it was quite, you know, I was quite moved by it. It was what those guys did, what they went through. And, you know, it's quite, it's forgotten. So people want to learn a little bit about, you know, the recent history of Korea, the Korean War. Go ahead and watch that. Anyway, Scooter, I have to ask you, I mean, before we jump into this, and I admit I'm not going to be able to get everything that I wrote down or maybe even half of it out there due to time. But let me ask you this question. In your opinion, in, in your, from your foxhole and the amount of time you've um, spent in this business, you know, you're a journalist, you're a radio show host, you're a researcher. So what do you think brought the summit to fruition? Was it A, Kim lost his nuke arsenal somehow? 
B, China told Kim that this was the last straw. C, US, the U.S. told China that this was the last straw, and if things did not change, we would attack. Or D, Kim let it be known that he was going to do something in order to get what he wants. What do you think is the most likely option? Well, the physical first reaction would be parroting what Trump said, that it was the rhetoric that did this and using the textbook playbook for negotiations of decades past, it didn't work, so they threw it out. But when you bring up the question of back channels, I now they're having to admit when Ivanka went to the Olympics, she was carrying private back channel messages to go through the, the North Korean Olympic athletes that came to South Korea. We talked about that scenario. Um, right. So, yeah. but your better question is, was it U.S. pressure, you know, you know what, or get off the pot, or China? Um, in the more I've talked with you and the more I've researched, I, again, the visceral gut reaction would be to parrot what Trump said. No, but ultimately, I don't think China has... And maybe I'm wrong because I don't. You're on the ground in that theater, and understand the mindset. I don't think China has the chutzpah to, to pull the trigger. They kind of they they're more in appearances shady than the United States. So quick to use military force. Does that make sense? And right, so when, I understand. And when so you say pre, applying pre, it's you know you know what time or get off the pot. That would suggest as we've talked about ground invasion does not work. Airstrikes do not work. It has to be a precise, deliberate, tactical nuclear strike, period. That's how you get him out. He has no incentive to get out. And is a deal with the West or China? I don't think China has the chutzpah to threaten to nuke him. Where clearly Trump and this administration did have the chutzpah to do so, and do so even very publicly to the masses in social media. Fair enough. But I could be Consider totally that. wrong. I'm a high school dropout. <laughs> hey, seriously. No, no, seriously. Hey, I appreciate I, your I compliments, no but I am not a policy, foreign policy expert. I could be completely wrong. But my gut, my visceral would be, no, no, rhetoric. But that's too easy an explanation. And, and the options you gave, China over the U.S., my gut would say the U.S. would be more threatening with the absolute god-awful versus china i think china would do it more more backhandedly but i could be wrong well i'm i've got several articles in front of me and um looking at one from the national review it's a great article it says 10 simple rules for negotiating with dictators by frank Lavin. and one of those rules is dictators are dictators for a reason <clears throat> and he goes on to say they are not unaware of their country's impoverishment. They just have other priorities. And regardless how many kitchen debates they participate in or how many movies they are shown, checkbook diplomacy will have limited effect and can even be seen as a sign of U.S. weakness. And so Kim knows what he's doing. You know, a lot of people say, oh, he's a crazy, he's out of his mind. He is absolutely not out of his mind. He knows what he is doing. And with, we can get to this, these narratives later. Uh, but, I mean, they're definitely relevant. Um, but to what I'm seeing in the Korea Herald and the Korea Times, uh, this, I, it's a collection of points from different articles. Okay. And what, what, what have we seen from this summit other than, you know, photo ops and, you know, photos in high definition and handshaking and ball washing? We've seen an imbalance of get versus give, have we not? Would you concede to that, or uh, would you agree? I would absolutely agree, even though I laughed. It was the analogy, but yes, I, that is an accurate statement. And with that, with that said, allow me to say this. Um, what actually happened? Well, me, simply meeting with Kim Jong-un, what did that do? Well... That elevated uh, Kim's status, not just as not just in uh, 
popularity, just as being known, but elevated his status and character. Okay, Josh, hold that thought. We're 31 after, 29 to the top. When we come back, we're going right. That's a great point. One argument here in the West, it, it propelled Kim to international status, raised, okay, raised the bar, so to speak. We'll also uh, open up the phone lines and raise calls, 877-353-1310. Special thanks to Greeley West Side Liquor for that. They're, of course, out and about making sure that you can stay home and, and, and drink and just have your booze delivered. 970-353-0036. Otherwise, jump on the phones. We'll also take your calls in this next segment with Joshua Card. So if you've got questions, now's the time to speak up. 877-353-1310 across the globe. We'll be right back from the CRP 4x4 studios with more of the Scooter McGee Show. your favorite show we'll keep it warm for you free podcasts are available online at 1310kfka.com thanks 811 for keeping me safe while i planted a new garden remember to click or call 811 before you begin any outdoor project that requires digging sponsored by colorado 811 the colorado broadcasters association and this station this is Dave Frazier from KWGN Channel 2 Pinpoint Weather. Gusty thunderstorms, some strong wind, lightning around till about 7 or 8 o'clock. Otherwise, we'll head down into about 60 degrees overnight under partly cloudy skies. We'll be in the upper 80s on Saturday with showers and thunderstorms again possible late in the day. Watch out for lightning and wind. And then Sunday, we cool into the 70s for Father's Day with a pretty good chance we will see showers and rain possible through the day. This weather update is brought to you by North Range Behavioral Health. Visit northrange.org. Hi, I'm Monday, the so-called worst day of the week. I get it, a great weekend and then I show up and ruin everything. But not anymore, thanks to Kenny's Steakhouse, Northern Colorado's best burger. Come see for yourself at Kenny's Steakhouse, Mega Burger Mondays. Build your own delicious burger and grab a $2 draft beer while you're at it. To see all of Kenny's Super Daily Specials like Mega Burger Mondays, log on at kennysteakhouse.com. Kenny's Steakhouse in Greeley, a great experience. First time, every time. As king of the backyard party, you've got a lot of responsibilities. You've got cold ones to drink, great jokes to share, making sure the yard is in tip-top shape, and getting in the game of catch with little Jimmy. With all of these things to do, you don't want to be stuck by the grill. That's why you need a Louisiana grill from Warehouse Supply. The pellet grill really does all of the work for you, but we can keep that our little secret. Best of all, the wood-smoked food will have everyone drooling. Find Warehouse Supply and these grills right off of Highway 85 in LaSalle. Five concerts, one low price. The 2018 Greeley Stampede Superstars Concert Series includes Darius Rucker, Justin Lynch, Aaron Watson, and the Roots and Boots Store featuring Sammy Kershaw, Colin Ray, and Aaron Tippett. And she don't know she's beautiful. With more to be announced. Packages on sale February 21st, starting at $80. Visit GreelyStampede.org for details. Accessories with a flair and hair is a boutique, hair salon, makeup studio, and wig center. We feature fun fashions, awesome accessories, and our private label, Star Natural Skin Care Line. It's about having class, about having sass, about having flair. While just about anyone can sell clothes, we sell fashion and have been doing it in downtown Greeley for 20 years. Life is way too short to wear boring clothes, and we have a passion for fashion at Accessories with a Flair and Hair, located at 801 8th Avenue, Suite 4. Look for that red awning. Let us help you get your flair on. Cutting edge commentary from the edge of reality. The Scooter McGee Show is back on News Talk 1310 KFKA. Welcome back, Gotham. 
Welcome back. We're going to take a in-depth look in this hour, what's going on in South Korea. Post-summit. Singapore, of course, ground zero for that between Kim Jong-il and Donald Trump. I said Kim Jong-il. Kim Jong-un. Sorry. And we're going to take calls tonight. 877-353-1310. Special thanks to Greeley Westside Liquor. They're sponsoring us again here for the Greeley Stampede. So all of your delivery orders, all of Greeley, all of Evans, 970-353-0036, 1 to midnight, which is a lie. It's 1130 so the kids can get back in the store before you, okay? So we're going to go back to Joshua Card. Josh is with us right now. You're there, right, Josh? Yes, I'm here. All right, so let's get through that extrapolation thought you had about propelling Kim to the stage, and then we have calls waiting to ask you questions, actually. Uh Uh-oh. No, no. Okay. No pressure. First, I think one thing that folks back home need to understand, one cultural difference here, or maybe a tactic, and I've, I've had to deal with this so many times when I'm looking at teaching contracts. Koreans, Chinese, what, you know, let's just say this part of the world. A contract has about as much use as toilet paper. And the way we, you know, Westerners view a contract is binding, you know, black and white. They see contracts just as, you know, it's still open for negotiation, no matter who has signed it with how many fancy legal stamps. No matter how much dust is on the filing cabinet it's sitting in. Right. Okay. And Koreans are very, and Chinese too, they're very, we discussed this a little bit before, they're very good at saving face, even for each other, you know, not allowing the other person to, to lose face. It is it's a very highly enforced unwritten rule and they're very good at deflecting arguments whereas if you know let's say you and i are having a discussion or you know a polite debate or whatever or an argument we want to hit the nail on the head and get to the point this part of the world they dance around and deflect very very (laughs) they're very good at it uh, very good at reframing debates, reframing the argument, and accusing you of doing what they're doing, causing uh, causing you to be distracted. You know, they're very good at pettifogging. I love that word. I got that from the O'Reilly bag. I love that word. And it, it can be quite frustrating. And so th- this is an example, of, you know, of, of how North Korea has duped, you know, our presidents since Truman. And you think one day we would learn, maybe we have, or as you know, whatever, we can fit this in with the left, the false left, right paradigm. Maybe this is just world plow, you know, the, the powers of the world, the powers that be, the puppet masters just doing their dance, and people are just doing what they're told. But one of the big cultural differences is um, we like to get to the point very quickly, and if we here they don't. And if they're wrong, they will not admit to it ever. Very rarely. Because it's if, back to uh, it's back to the cultural of saving face. Exactly. They okay. would rather go down lying, saving face, than to admit to to the truth. And it, we, it, a simple analogy, um, Lane, my friend, may have said this already, but I don't think he did. But If you have a car full of Korean workers and the boss is driving and he says, we're going over this cliff, no one will argue with him. They will go down and die with him because they're afraid of arguing with the boss. They're afraid of giving input and opinion. You just don't do it. So that's some of the other cultural differences here. But but the big one is deflecting, pettifogging, and really not really good at honoring commitments it's more about the relationship rather than what's set on paper and i still have yet to be able to play by these rules it's been a crux in my teaching career for a long time not in regards to me as a teacher but how i work with uh, a korean supervisor with yeah with that but, cultural anyway, aspect. Okay. but that's that's one thing that people should you know try to understand now going back to 
We'll hold that thought because Dave's joining us from San Francisco on the phone. Has a question for you. Welcome to the show, Dave. Okay. Oh, thanks, Scooter. Uh, yeah, I um, I'm not sure if I fully agree with your guest on that, but I uh, because I I think that this whole thing is a setup. Uh, if you remember the old book, uh, uh, Catch Twenty Two, uh, the wars were always uh, they were. Um, the investors in war uh, were the diplomats, the upper echelon, uh, you know, everything above a colonel was uh, allowed to be an investor in in the black market of war. And uh, in the book Catch-22, it's very clear that these guys will allow a war to be dragged on just so they can profiteer, and they won't... Uh, you know, they'll allow the diplomacy to go bad so that they can drag the war on and more people die and they get to sell more toothpaste at $14 a tube uh, to the war effort. Uh, the profiteers never end. So I think that Trump is clearly involved in, you know, in the setup to the next one. Uh, Korea is part of the axis of evil, and uh, Trump is just playing the next uh, round of, of setup for uh, the neocons effort to go after the axis of evil and if you're a 911 truther like me you realize that this has all been a hoax anyway so right. uh, but uh i that said uh i'm wondering if you're familiar with uh you and your guest are familiar with Paul Manafort's origins mm. no, maybe it's been yeah not necessarily what do you know that we don't dave well if you just basically look up uh, Paul Manafort. Uh, I, I looked him up uh, with a you know on Google. You do uh, Manafort plus Roy Cohn. Uh, you get a whole lot. And uh, basically, starting 40 years ago, uh, Manafort, Roger Stone, and um, Dick Morris and uh, Trump were all pals of Roy Cohn. Yeah, Manafort, I'm seeing that. How did I miss that? <laughs> nice right. And, the, the thing was, was that they became uh, PR guys for dictators, and it was allowed to go on for 40 years. Uh, I think they started with uh, uh, Marcos of the Philippines, and then they got involved in others. But the thing that uh, you, know, you might get some enjoyment out of, uh, uh, Scooter, is um, you're familiar with uh, the black market in gold after World War II. A lot of that Nazi gold never showed up. Yep. Very similarly, in the uh, Pacific Theater, uh, the uh, the emperor and, and his buddies were capturing gold all over Vietnam, China, Korea, wherever they invaded. Uh, Japan was capturing their gold and putting it into a stash. And it was uh, eventually, it was called the White Lily uh, uh, Horde, or the look up White Lily, and you'll find a great deal about it. And uh, it said that uh, uh, the Philippines, uh, they were, it, it was stashed in the Philippines, and it was said that Marcos found it. And then since uh, uh, Manafort and Stone, well, especially Manafort and Stone, were involved in uh, helping do PR work for uh, uh, Marcos, this was after he captured that gold. So I always wonder whether or not Manafort and Stone have, uh, they feel that they're invincible because they have ties to that white lily gold that never showed up. And uh, so I've always wondered what happened to the white lily after, uh, after uh, Marcos found it. And then why did uh, Manafort and Stone think that they were invincible for the last 40 years? And then, of course, uh, once Trump decided to add Manafort to his uh, staff list in the election, it was one thing to have these PR agents for dictators wandering around in the world. But once they got involved in a U.S. election, it made it very plain that they were going to uh, help create a dictatorship uh, in the United States. That's what their job was, to make dictatorships happen. And, uh, and so they think they're invincible because they have a hold on White Lily, plus uh, Trump decides to add them to his staff list and make a dictatorship in the United States. So, uh, yeah, 
Church. All of the groundwork is laid there through Rex 84 all the way up through NSPD 51 and HSPD 20. I'm not familiar with those numbers, but yeah, I mean, just looking at Catch-22 and the idea of wars without end, that they will intentionally uh, lose battles, they'll intentionally make make bad treaties to to create wars. Yep. Uh, uh, it's it's a setup, and I don't trust it at all. I I think that uh, uh, Trump is still playing. You know, I've told Scooter I believe that Trump has organized crime, and when you start looking at well, you look at Trump and Cohn. Cohn was Tony Salerno's lawyer. I mean, he worked with sure. Gambino, Salerno, Genovese. Um, all the families. Yeah. All, well, yeah, it was New York. Yes, there's five families. But, yeah, um, Paul Castellano, the Genovese, uh, Fat Tony Salerno, God rest his soul, at this point, still in the 80s, Don Carlo Gambino, up until, uh, again, then the hit on Paul Castellano and, and John Gotti taking over. We're at uh, 47 after 13 to the top. Sad news for the Scooter McGee Show. Matt Guitar Murphy, rest in peace, my friend. Goosebumps. We'll be back. Thirteen ten KFKA. Our name says it all. Caring Hearts Home Health Care. Caring Hearts is Northern Colorado's premier in-home health care, providing both medical and non-medical care since 2001. Caring Hearts is locally owned and operated by our own experienced staff of licensed nurses to ensure a consistent quality of care. From nursing, physical, occupational, and speech therapy to homemaking, respite, and companionship, patient care always comes first at Caring Hearts. Call us today at 378-1409 or visit us online at caringheartshh.com. Can't decide where to go for happy hour? I'll make it easy for you. Right Coast Pizza. Happy hour at Right Coast is daily from 3 to 6 with dollar off draft beers, $2 off glasses of wine, and $5 off the bottle. Get your fill of their specialty pizzas while sipping a craft beer on the patio. Stay up to date with Right Coast Pizza by visiting rightcoastpizza.com. Right Coast Pizza on 8th Street in downtown Greeley. What does Alt Feed Mill have to offer that chain feed stores don't? They care for everyone in the ag industry, whether you're buying a tote of feed for the pigs, chickens, sheep, or horses. If you're buying a truckload for the dairy or feedlot, they have that handled as well. Alt Feed Mill cares about the ag industry and will give you the respect and care that you deserve. They're located at 635 Railroad Avenue in Alt and can be reached by phone at 970-834-2132. Alt Feed Mill, agricultural business done right. Family owned and operated since 1947, Perry's Vac and Sew continues to be an industry leader and the go-to shop in the Greeley area for sales and service on vacuums and sewing machines. Perry's Vac and Sew features top selling brands, including products from Ricard, made right here in the USA. Hi, this is Joe Perry. Come and see us at Perry's Vac and Sew and we'll show you big box store selection with that all important local customer service. Have questions? Give us a call at 378-7804. Perry's Vac and Sew on West 10th Street in Greeley. Cutting edge commentary from the edge of reality. The Scooter McGee Show is back on News Talk 1310 KFKA. The following program is intended for mature audiences. Welcome back, Upham. We're in the middle of a conversation with Joshua Card. He is boots on the ground down in South Korea. We're also taking your calls, 877-353. And joining us from Washington, Lane Smith is going to be back on with us here momentarily. Welcome back, Josh. Thank you. Oh, I, I don't mean to disrespect the last caller. I think his name was Dave, right? Yes, Dave was in San Francisco. Right. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't mean any disrespect, and I'm always happy to hear a counter, a counterpoint to what I view of what's going on because you know, I'm I'm small potatoes. But he said he disagreed with me, but he never said what he disagreed about. And 
Oh, all right, I mean, Dave. At what, what, point, what yeah. point he disagreed with, and I never even got to the meat of the order yet, so I'm still – Yeah, and I, I went to him in the break, and he it? would already hung up the phone when we went to break there for the clock. So, yeah, oh, okay. Dave, either chime back in with us, 877 or use the symbol at the Scooter McGee Twitter will notify me or just post on my personal page that you and I are friends on. Go ahead. Because I think, I think once we're done with this, he'll find that – he and I actually have similar ideas about what's going on. Um, last, you know, where we left off was the, you know, the, the imbalance of get versus give. And it just, as you and I talked about in the past, you know, Kim's shuttle diplomacy and everything that he's done, it, it was to benefit him. And look what happened. He was now embraced to the table of the world, you know, the, the negotiating table of the world. He is now confirmed as a high roller because he did have nuclear weapons. And what happened to all those political experts? You know, in recent times, even a year ago, that said, no, it's years away before North Korea will will even have you know the capability to deliver the bomb. What happened to those talking points? So, so when we when when the headlines are saying denuclearization, well, then that means they did have the nuclear bomb. So anyway, no one's talking about that. Um, anyway, the, the give versus the get. Uh, President Trump, he, he said he promised, he promised Kim that the U.S. would end joint military exercises with South Korea. And this came as a surprise to you know, experts in the Pentagon and even Seoul. Um, and Trump even admitted, oh, yes, they are provocative. And this... This point ties into what I'm talking about with the National Review, 10 Ways to Deal with a Dictator. It mentions something called the ratchet effect. And the ratchet effect is something that can only move on, uh, something that can only move one way or move easily more, uh, move one way. And for shutting down the military exercises with South Korea is very easy to do, but to, to restart them, is not so easy due to budget and planning constraints. And so basically the point is Trump should not have made, she should not have promised something that, that cannot be undone. Would you agree with that? I, w I would agree. Okay, so that's, that's another point. Um, and, and another, Trump also publicly stated, and this is, this is quoted, I mean, he, he said this, he said he'd like to see, um, He'd like to bring back the U.S. troops altogether, but it's too soon. You know, regardless of whether he has that um, conjunction, but it's too soon. He went on record saying that. Okay, and then what else did he do? He was praising Kim as a talented, a talented person, and quote, only one in 100,000 people could succeed at what he has done. And, and through this summit... I remember him saying that while I was watching the press conference. And, and basically, and the, what we have done, well, what the, the, what the U.S. has done, we've promised to keep supporting the, the Kim regime. The current status quo. Yes, to support them. And... There's been no address of human rights in this summit. Now, granted, I can see I could I could see why if the president went in there said, "Okay, now we're going to talk about human rights." Well, Kim Jong Un probably would have just walked away from the table. Just as you know, under the Obama administration, they didn't address human rights in Cuba. Nope. Neither did the uh, neither did the EU chief. What's her name? Uh, I had it in front of me. I can't find it. But, but when she went to Cuba, they weren't addressed. So, you know, that, that's kind of similar to, you know, I guess maybe a little bit in the, you know, the, the Revolutionary War when, you know, the Congress got, the Congress of the States got together and people now say, oh, you know, they didn't abolish slavery before they became a union. Well, they couldn't, you know, they all had to agree on something rather than be divisive. So I can see both sides of not addressing this yet, but maybe down the line. But it's still something to be considered. Um, there's also no, and, and I've looked for uh, different articles here in the Korea Herald, in the National Review, and a couple other sources. 
And what I've found is that there is no agreed time frame of denuclearization. Nope. And how it will be achieved and verified. And also, there is no agreement or a share of a common definition of what denuclearization actually means. Or looks like, right. It, on, it only talks about a process, not an outcome. So what is this? It, it, I mean, what just really happened? And my conspiratorial and, argument, I know we talked about this, Kim could draw this out the whole way through and still keep a handful, one, two, or three nukes, walk away from the table, and nothing has been done. But my argument is I still believe that it's worth pursuing a peace process. Even, true. Which, which, sadly, even though this could be worse. Now, Josh, we're one minute up against a break, and I just – I think that – okay, hold on a second. KFK? <clears throat> It's Dave back on the phone. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Hold on. Don't. Okay, we got Lane on, on hold from Washington. We've got Dave on hold from, uh, uh, I know this, California. He's in San Francisco. So here, let me put him on hold. And uh, Josh, how about if we just carry this discussion? We'll bring Lane in. We'll bring back Dave, and we'll continue the Tatar date. Sure, sure. Fair enough. Okay. Gotham also coming up here in the bottom of the next hour. We'll be doing stampede ticket giveaways, compliments of Gould Parts and Eaton. We have uh, full lines now on the Greeley West Side Liquor Hotline, 877-353-1310. So as calls drop off, keep just keep dialing and you'll get once you get an answer or dial tone or a dial tone. Once the phone is ringing, just stay on the line and I'll get to it. Once you get a dial tone. All right. The opinions, views, and ideas on this hour as crazy as they may be. Do not repeat. I do not represent those station owners, management, staff, interns, or mascots. We'll find out immediately when we come back uh, what Dave's issue was and the disagreement. We'll get into that. We'll get to Lane Smith from Washington, and we'll continue our Washington State. And we will continue our conversation with Joshua Card. Coming up later tonight on this day in Illuminati history and headlines for a Take Out the Trash News Weekend 616, 617. Off we go, out for coconut smoke, and we will be right back. 